We've got the son of sweetness, Jarrett Payton. He's doing the heavy lifting today. Let's get it cooking right now with a special guest. When you look at it, everybody's talking about the quarterbacks, and rightfully so, but the coaches and the matchup between Bruce Arians and Andy Reid is very, very interesting. What's your take on both the coaches heading into this Super Bowl Sunday? That's a good place to start. Look, here's, here's what I think is really just so interesting. Uh, Andy Reid went to a Super Bowl 10 years ago with Donovan McNabb, but since then he hasn't had a quarterback that was capable of making it happen. Now, obviously he's got one. Almost in the same way, Bruce Arians, uh, he was able to go to a Super Bowl once he found a quarterback, which happened to be Kurt Warner. Uh, they didn't win, but now 10 years later, whatever it's been, he's, he, you know, Tom Brady fell in his lap. So I think this, it, it, it kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It validates not only both coaches, but both coaches systems that if you have competent players, then, then you can expect them to be successful and get you where you want to go. And so in, in that way, you think that uh, Andy Reid, who obviously is now everybody's coach of the year du jour, you know, how much success they've had this past three years. But all that being said, you've got to just stand back and say to Bruce, hey, that was, uh, what, were, what were they, six and 10 or something, seven and nine last year? And all of a sudden, you get the right guy, the right player, and, the, you know, Tom Brady is is the GOAT, no question about it. He's, he's not just a quarterback. He's maybe the greatest quarterback of all time. But it verifies and validates what Bruce Arians has had as a – a football schematic, a football plan for the last, you know, couple of decades. And uh, I, I just think the whole thing is, it's, it's fantastic. It's the GOAT versus the phenom. Who do you think could be an X factor in Sunday's game? There's so many offensive weapons on, on both sides of the ball. And defensively, there's also some good players as well. To me, I'm leaning toward an offensive player on either team. But there's a lot of speed and a lot of talent on both squads. Okay. Now, Jared, we all, you know, we play this game. We all have certain egos. When I played, I wanted to be the best defensive lineman on the field. Richard Dent wanted to be the best. And Steve McMichael wanted to be the best. Well, a lot of players are going into this game. And let's talk about the skill. Mike Evans, nobody's really talked about him. Everybody's talking about Tyreek Hill. And so he's going to be, you know, kind of carrying a chip on his shoulder. But... The secret to the Tampa Bay offense, in my mind, obviously, is for them to allow Tom Brady to not only, you know, be protected and buy enough time, and, and a lot of that is play action, but to be able to get the ball deep enough. And we saw him throw it so well early in the game against Green Bay down the field. If he's got time and Kansas City cannot uh, – you know, uh, put the clock on him and make him start. And, and, and you know how it is. You, you've seen it when a, when a quarterback gets knocked around early, he's never the same. He's jittery the whole game. And, and obviously that's what uh, Steve Spagnuolo is going to do. He knows that, Hey, if he gives up a touchdown, I ain't worried about it. I got a guy named Mahomes over here. He can get me a touchdown to get back even. Tampa Bay, they're a little bit different. They have a more methodical plotting offense where Kansas City can score anytime, anywhere. So I think Spagnoli is going to bring the house. And when you blitz both of these quarterbacks, it's a completely different reaction. And the and this past year, Brady in this Tampa Bay offense was 30th in the league and QBR when opponents brought a blitz of some kind, you know, a five, six, seven man rush. Conversely, Patrick Mahomes was number one in the NFL with a 98.6 rating uh, QBR when you blitzed him. So you just look at it. I mean, it's almost like uh, you're a dummy if you don't blitz Tom Brady. Yeah, uh, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. And we're going to talk a little bears because I have to get your your take on how the end of the season came down. A lot of Bears fans were 
we're hoping for some type of change at the end of the season. And uh, once that press conference came about, the Bears brass said they're not making any changes. They believe in Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy. Were you surprised that there weren't any changes made? I wasn't surprised, no. You know, Jared, you know, I was very fortunate in the sense that I got to play for the Bears when they had somebody in charge that knew what was going on. Obviously, the great George Hallis was still a, a factor, but he had appointed Jim Finks to be the general manager. And we all know what Finks was capable of doing, especially during the draft. I think we had nine first-round draft picks starting in the Super Bowl. I mean, I mean, that in itself is incomprehensible. But all, all those things being said, the reason the, the Bears didn't make a change is they don't know what to do with, with that change. Uh, should we get this guy? Should we get that guy? Should we fire this guy? Should we fire this one? They don't know what to do. Uh, they're thinking, you know, the old, everybody knows the, uh, what was it? Uh, you know, you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It's kind of where we're at, and, you know? And I, I personally think that if a couple of things fall into place, the Bears could be better next year. You know, I, I, there's no question that uh, Nick Foles is capable and competent. He was never given, uh, I think, a fair shake with the offensive line, with all the injuries and the COVID. And, the, and, they, and as soon as Foles got the, uh, the starting assignment, they went away from the conventional offense and, the, and, and running the ball. It was, it, it was, it was, it was crazy. But a lot of times, you know, in the off season, you can uh, go back and, and dissect and reflect and realize, hey, I made a lot of dumb mistakes. And I'm talking about Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. I made a lot of uh, mental errors and, and I did a lot of things that I shouldn't have done and I would never do again. And in an abstract way, I think, I think George McCaskey is hoping that this, uh, this uh, you know, recapitulation that we'll have a lot better idea of how to go about things. You know, I think the uh, the experiment of Mitchell Trubisky has got to be over. But, you know, like everybody else, wouldn't it be great if we would get a guy like Tom Brady to drop in our lap, like Tampa Bay was? Uh, wouldn't it be Matt Ryan? I don't think you'll see that. You know, the Bears are over the cap. I think they're just going to have to take their medicine and bring everybody back and and just see if they can't catch lightning in a bottle. And is it possible? Maybe. You know, I, over over time, you've seen a team kind of have a, it's a one hit wonder. They get hot for one year and then they go away. And maybe that's what happens next year. That was the Danimal, <laughs> part of a legendary Chicago Bear championship team in 1985. Uh, I grew up a Bears fan, and uh, they were just bigger than life. But nobody was bigger than Walter Payton, just the greatest running back, in my opinion, in the history of the game. And we're so excited to bring in the son, the Payton son. You want to follow him on social media, it's Payton son. <laughs> Jared Payton joins us from Chicago. Jared, what was it? I know you were just six at the time when they won that championship, but what was it like being around that team? Man, you guys, I, I just got chills when I'm thinking about it. This city was like no other, and I know we've had – you know, Stanley Cup championships. I lived through the, you know, the 90s and the Bulls with the two uh, three-peats, but nothing was like 85. The town was going crazy. And just think about it. They had no social media. You had to get your news either from the radio, the TV, or a newspaper, and they were known worldwide. So it was just amazing to see the impact that that team had on the NFL and still having on people who loved the NFL and watch this game on a constant basis. Another crazy thing is even when the Cubs are at their best, when the Bears start, the Bears take over all the sports talk radio and the headlines. It, it, it's a Bears town. Cubs are great. All those other teams get some attention, but the Bears are the number one focus. That's right, Jared. And now to make you feel old and make me feel older, I met you some 40 years ago right up the road in Lakeland, Florida, when I had the babysitting chore to take care of for, for your dad and your mom can you believe what kind of irresponsible parents were they they left me in charge of a young jared payton somehow we got through it but 